So in this video, we're gonna be going over this device right here, which is a soft starter for your AC unit. This is Microware's newest model. It has a ton of features on it, especially for those of you that are on solar or you're wanting to run your entire house in central AC or heat pump using a generator in the event of a power outage. But then for everybody else, this also offers a ton of other features that can pretty much benefit every homeowner. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so now let's actually take a look at the soft starter and go over all the features that this has to offer and the differences with this brand new model. This just came out this year. Now I will tell you right now, this is not a sponsored video. This was not sent to me for free. I'm not being paid for it. I bought this with my own money and I'm just sharing it with you because I know a large part of our community can benefit from this. So this is the Micro Air Easy Start Flex. One of the biggest differences between this new Flex model and their older models is that this can be installed on pretty much any size or tonnage of AC unit that you might have. So this can be installed on AC units up to six tons. Whereas on their previous models, you had to buy the correct model for the size of AC unit that you had. They've taken all the guesswork and figuring out of that by coming out with this new Easy Start Flex. And overall, this is 50% smaller than this older model over here. So we briefly discussed that this is great for people with generators or solar. And the reason for that is it decreases the inrush current that is required to start up your AC unit. So first it starts the fan right away, and then it slowly ramps up that power to whatever your unit needs in order to get that compressor running. And by doing that, it reduces the inrush current by up to 75%. So that is a massive reduction and the amount of current that's required to start up your AC unit. Now, some people get the soft starters and hard starters mixed up. Without getting too much into it, a hard starter really is a start capacitor that's in series with a PTCR. And hard starts actually increase the startup amperage, but they do slightly reduce the startup duration. So with a hard start, you're getting more of a jolt of electricity to that compressor to help get it started faster, but it's not actually reducing the current that's required. Whereas a soft starter and with these easy starts, it's completely different since it dramatically reduces the startup amperage and it distributes it over a longer period of time. And by doing that, that is going to extend the life of that compressor by quite a bit because it's not having to work as hard when it goes to start up. Also, another great benefit is that if you're somebody that experiences when your AC unit turns on, your lights flicker, this can oftentimes help with those of you that have that flickering that happens with your compressor turning on. Also, this is gonna help quiet down your AC unit when it starts up. I also mentioned that this thing can help diagnose your unit and it can also protect it. So this will sense a short cycle and in the event of a short cycle, it's gonna make sure that there is a delay before your unit tries to start up again. By this taking care of that for you, this reduces any potential damage and wear and tear on the compressor motor and it ensures that it will last longer as opposed to if you were constantly having short cycles that can dramatically reduce the longevity of your compressor. This also has overcurrent and stall detection. It also detects if there's any wiring issues with the compressor. Another thing that this offers is in the event of a surge, if you don't have a whole home surge protector on your home, which I highly recommend and I have a video for that, or you don't have a surge protector on your AC unit, this will protect the compressor from that surge. It will act as a sacrificial device. It will give itself up and protect the compressor so that sudden spike of voltage doesn't damage your compressor and therefore need to be replaced. As you can see down here, there's a Bluetooth symbol. They have an app for these that connects to this when it's running, where you can take a look at in real time, live statistics such as current amp draw, your last inrush reading, and then any faults that are happening. It's gonna alert you to any of those faults, let you know exactly what they are, and if you don't fully understand what they are or what you need to be doing, you can easily send this to Micro Air. They will respond to you very quickly and let you know exactly what's going on with your unit and what you need to be taking a look at. Now, some people claim that this has saved them money on their electric bill. That's not really what this is designed for. This is really just designed to get your inrush amperage down, helping with generators and solar and also protecting your AC unit. So for those of you that live in areas that might charge you a different rate based on your peak amp draw, then maybe this would save you some money since your amp draw would be lower. We're gonna do some testing before and after installing this. We're gonna check that inrush because we wanna get a baseline for just how much amperage draw there is on this to start up that compressor or the inrush current. So we're gonna check that before and then after we install it to see how much it's reduced. But we're also gonna take a look at the reading before and after installation 
of the run amperage or run current that is being used. That's gonna be the best way to tell whether or not there can be any expected energy savings, but MicroWare does not advertise that to be the case, but we're gonna check it anyway because again, some people have said that they have seen savings on their energy bill, but we'll find out. And to get underneath of this panel, I just need to take out four screws by using a 5 16 nut driver. All right, so now we're ready to take our first test. This does not have any soft start on it currently. It doesn't have a hard start on it. It has nothing. This is just stock. So let's go ahead, see what our initial inrush current is, and then we'll also check the run amperage to see how much current the compressor is using just to run. So I'll go ahead, turn my multimeter on to amperage alternating current. And because I want to get an inrush reading, I'll push inrush. All right, so here's where our inrush reading is going to show up. And then up here, once the inrush reading shows up, it's also going to show us what our run amperage is there at the top. And I've got my clamp around the compressor run wire. So this is what's going to give us our amperage readings that are going to the compressor. So I'll go ahead, turn on my AC and see what we got. All right, so as you can see, our current inrush amperage is 121.2 amps. So that is how many amps it actually takes to get that compressor started. Now, if we look up here at the top of the screen, we'll see where it says 12.1 amps. That is how many amps the compressor is currently using just to run. So as you can see, it's a massive difference between how much it takes to start it up and then actually run the compressor, which is why a lot of times if you're wanting to run this with a generator, a lot of generators don't have enough peak power to reach 121 amps. But the vast majority of your generators are going to be able to handle now it's at 11.8 amps or right around 12 amps to run the compressor. So now let's go ahead, get the soft starter installed and see what results we get afterwards. All right, so now before I get started with installing anything, I wanna make sure that my power is off to my AC unit. For me, this is a pull-out disconnect. I just set that in on top. For you, it might be circuit breakers. Whatever it is, we wanna make sure that the power is off going to the AC unit. So as we discussed earlier, this soft starter is 50% smaller than their previous versions, which in some cases is really gonna help for people that are actually wanting to mount their soft starter inside of their AC unit. And even at 50% less than the previous model, while I could force it in here, I'm not gonna do that. These things are made to be able to be outside in the elements. These cases are weatherproof and dustproof. So if this can't fit in your AC unit, no big deal whatsoever. I've been mounting mine outside for years. And just to give you a visual as to what I've been mounting mine to, I just made this up out of scrap wood. I just mount it to the wood there in the back, like so. So now I'll go ahead and get started with the wiring. All right, so for me, my wiring is gonna come up through this hole down here in the bottom of this compartment here. As you can see, this is just rough metal. That's gonna be the case for pretty much anybody that's gonna be inserting their wiring in from the outside. So in that case, I would really recommend at the very least picking up some rubber grommets like these and putting them into that hole so that this just rough metal around here doesn't do any damage to the wiring over time. Now, another thing that I've used that works really well is this liquid tight fitting here. The jacket from the whip coming from the soft starter actually fits into that hole almost perfectly. So that can be another option as well. All right, so now I'm gonna feed my wiring up through the hole and into the condenser. All right, so now that we've got the wiring running into the condenser, before we do anything with this, as far as touching anything or hooking anything up, we wanna make sure that this capacitor is discharged. What most AC techs do is they take their screwdriver and they just go from terminal to terminal and I go from common to herm and then common to fan. And then once I've done that a couple of times, then I know that my capacitor is discharged. All right, so now we'll get into the actual wiring of it. And before I get started, I highly encourage you, if you're installing one of these, make sure you follow MicroWare's instructions. And as we're going through this, for those of you that don't know what these are called, this over here is the capacitor, and this over here is the contactor. If you already have a hard start kit installed on your unit, that needs to be removed first. The two cannot be working together. So just verify if you have a hard start that it's already taken off before proceeding with installing the wiring. All right, so the first wire we're gonna work on hooking up is gonna be this orange wire coming from the soft starter. And in order to do that, we're gonna use one of these female spade connectors here. And this is super easy to do. We just wanna make sure that our stranded wires are always twisted up and nice and straight. Then we'll just take the spade connector, put the wiring up into that spade connector, Make sure that it's seated all the way in. And now this is where we're gonna need some sort of a crimping tool to crimp this down. I always use these ratcheting crimpers here. These are super easy to ensure that you're getting a good crimp because it's gonna put down the proper pressure. You also have color-coded jaws here that will let you know exactly which one you need to insert into which one of the jaws. So this is blue. So we'd insert it into this jaw right here with the blue symbol. 
For your convenience, like always, I'll have links for these along with all of the other tools and the connectors, along with the different soft starters. I'll have links for everything you see in this video down in the description down below where you can easily locate them. When you click on those links, it will take you directly to whatever you clicked on so you can check them all out for yourself. Then once I've got those in the jaws, all I need to do is tighten them all the way down until the crimpers release. Once they release, enough pressure has been put on that crimp. And as you can see, a perfect crimp every single time. That is definitely not going to come off. So you remember we've got different terminals here on the capacitor. Well, this orange wire needs to get connected to these terminals over here on the Herm terminal. Just have to slide it on there. And just as easy as that, our orange wire is now installed. Next, I'm going to focus on installing this brown wire here. Now, this wire right here can cause some confusion, especially when reading the instructions. So much so that they included this warning on the brown wire that didn't used to be here. And it reads, warning, connect this wire only to the run winding. If connected to the run cap, damage will occur and the warranty will be voided. And the reason why there was confusion with this is because in the instructions, they tell you to look at the common side of your capacitor and then follow the wire coming out of the common side of your capacitor to the contactor and that would tell you which side of the contactor the compressor run wire is attached to. Unfortunately, people were actually connecting the brown wire to the common wire that's coming out of the capacitor and it was causing issues. So in my case, I've got these yellow wires over here on my common side of my capacitor. Well, the yellow wires are over here on the right side of my contactor. So this is where my compressor run wire is. And if you have more than one wire there, you're gonna be looking for the larger gauge wire. And a lot of times it's gonna be attached to one of the screws on the contactor and not just to one of the spade connections on the top or on the side of the contactor. So as long as you find the larger gauge wire, then you have located the compressor run wire. Now, if you still have uncertainties as to what is what, the majority of the time, the panel on your condenser is gonna have diagrams on it and it's gonna let you know exactly what color the wire is. It's gonna tell you what side of the contactor things are hooked to, the capacitor, and then exactly where they go. So again, follow the instructions from MicroAir, use your diagrams on your AC unit because everybody's situation is gonna be different for the most part. But I know that it's this one over here. We've traced it to the right side of my contactor here. This is the larger gauge wire. I've checked with my wiring diagram. So what I need to do now is I need to remove my large gauge yellow wire from the right side of my contactor here. And it's just as easy as unscrewing that screw out of the contactor. Now I need to take some wire strippers, cut that ring connector off of my yellow wire, re-strip the wire. Now I've got my bare stranded wire here. If I take my brown wire, you'll see these also had just have the bare strands on them, but the brown wire needs to connect to this yellow compressor run wire. And these are just as easy to install as taking one end putting it over the first wire, make sure that it's seated all the way up inside of that connector. Then take the wire that's being connected, insert it into the other side, make sure it's seated all the way. Then again, we'll take our crimping tool, insert it into the corresponding jaw on these ratcheting crimpers and crimp down. And so as you can see, these are now firmly connected. There's not gonna be any pulling those out and this is gonna last for a very, very long time. So now our compressor run wire is connected to the brown wire coming from the soft starter. Next, I'm gonna install the white wire coming from the soft starter. We're gonna need a connector on the end here. In this case, I'm gonna use one of these number 10 ring connectors. Again, just like we've done before, insert the wiring into that connector, and then again, crimp it down. And so now that's not gonna go anywhere. So now where this white wire goes is it takes the place of our yellow compressor run wire on the right side of this contactor. So all we have to do now is just take our new ring connector with that white wire, put it up where that yellow compressor run wire was, insert the screw in, and then just tighten it down into the right side of this contactor. All right, so now the last wire that needs to be connected from our soft starter to the condenser is the black wire. And just like the white wire, we're gonna take another ring connector. This is a 14 gauge wire. Go ahead, insert that in all the way like we have in the past, and then just crimp that down. Check the connection, it's not going anywhere. So now this black wire goes to the other side or opposite side of the contactor from the white wire that we installed. So over here on the left side where all these other black wires are, that's where this is gonna get connected. So in order to do that, I need to remove this screw from the left side of my contactor where these black wires are. Then I'll just take that screw, insert it into that ring connector. This is gonna go in on top. There's a spade connector underneath of this screw. 
We're gonna put this in on top of that. Make sure both of these black wires are installed underneath of the screw. Check to make sure everything's in there nice and tight which it is. All right, so now at this point, the soft starter is completely wired up. But before we start up our AC unit and take our next test, or if somebody wants to hook up their generator, the first thing that we wanna do before we do any of that is this soft starter learns your compressor. And the only way that it does that is on the first five starts and shutdowns, it's learning your compressor, how much amperage it takes to get it started, how it runs, what's normal for your particular compressor. And then based on the data that it gets from all of that, it adjusts everything to make sure that your compressor is starting up as easily as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead, turn my AC unit on, do my five learning starts, and then on the sixth one, we'll do our testing again and see just how much this soft starter has optimized this system and see just how much lower the inrush amperage is. All right, so we've gone through our five learning starts. So I'm gonna go ahead, turn on the air conditioner and see what we get. All right, so as you can hear, that's the fan turning on first, then the compressor. And as you can see, we're getting 32.3 inrush amps now. Our first reading before installing the soft start kit was right around 121 inrush amps. So now being at 32.3 inrush amps, that is a reduction of right at around 75%. That is a massive reduction in inrush amperage required to start up this compressor. And at that 32.3 inrush amps, just about any of your smaller to medium sized generators, of course your larger generators, there will be no problem. But even with your smaller to medium sized generators, they would have no issue starting up this four ton AC unit. Now, if we look at this reading just above our inrush reading, this is our run amperage currently and it's right at 11.9 or 12 amps. So as expected, no reduction in the run amperage as far as how many amps it takes to run the compressor once it's started. So in terms of that, you're not gonna see really any reduction on your electric bill. However, if you are someone that lives in an area where your electric company charges you a demand charge, and that is where they take the highest peak of amperage draw that your home pulled and they adjust your rates that way. So in that regard, if you're in an area that charges you different rates based on that, you could possibly see a fairly good reduction on your electric bill because your demand rate won't be as high by reducing the inrush amperage that your compressor pulls by up to that 75%. So as you can see, we got fantastic results. I've been using the Microware soft starters for a number of years now. I've had zero issues with them. So I highly recommend these Microware easy starts to pretty much everybody at least to look into them we've talked about all the things they can do for your compressor and as you can see these dramatic results it's no wonder that they can make such a difference so like always for your convenience i'll have links for everything you saw in this video from all the different micro air soft starters to the tools and the different connectors that i used in this video i'll have links for everything down in the description down below when you click on those links it will take you directly to whatever you clicked on so you can check them all out for yourself now if you found value in this video then you'll definitely find value in a video that i did in the past where I go over exactly how I went about installing my power inlet box and interlock kit in order to run my entire house and my AC unit using a generator. If that's of interest to you and you'd like to see exactly how I did it and demonstrate how it works, then all you have to do is click on this video right over here and it'll take you directly to it. So I hope that you found value in this video. And if you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments still, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.